Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. Uh, now we are getting started with the chapter 2. The previous few tutorials have already spoken about the chapter 1 of uh, ISTQB Foundation. Whereas now we'll be getting started with the chapter 2 of uh, the same curriculum. And here the chapter 2 deals with tests throughout the software life cycle. So uh, this chapter will basically talk about uh, understanding the software testing activities are being aligned towards the development life cycles. So let's quickly look into the topics what we'll be covering here. So the contents basically follow of uh, or consist of four topics here, uh, namely called as software development models. First of all, we'll be understanding what the software development models are and uh, what other variants we have uh, to be practiced today. Beyond that, we'll be looking into the test levels. We'll be understanding that what different levels of testing do we have, like you know, working with component testing, integration testing, or system testing, and acceptance testing. Not limited to that, we'll be also understanding to a certain extent that what are the functional and the non-functional levels that when we move to 2.3, that is test types. So in test types, we'll be understanding also about like what's white box testing and black box testing and what are the difference between the uh, functional and non-functional and so on. Beyond that, the last topic will be talking from the perspective of maintenance testing, where we'll be also understanding more on the what is retesting, what's regression, and what's impact analysis, what the maintenance team is all about, what do they take care of, and so on. So uh, altogether, uh, Chapter 2 will be talking more from the more testing uh, side, where we'll be understanding at what exactly dynamic testing and their levels are. So that would basically give you an understanding of all the major testing activities which takes place other than the you know fundamental test process which we have covered in the foundation level already so let's move into the topic 1 that's 2.1 software development model as a part of the very first activity or the first topic here in this chapter we are talking about understanding on the software development models the software development models, basically, we are, we are very much aware of like what techniques or what methodologies uh, we had in the traditional approaches, like working with waterfall model, V model, uh, you know, sequential and other things like prototyping and so on. But here, uh, you know, specifically to this topic, the very first topic, like 2.1.1 as V model, where they are trying to understand some of the principles of testing and they also want to convey you at this point of time that uh, there are some good characteristics of testing which is very well followed by V model compared to any other model. So here, uh, it's not basically that ISTQB recommends is that V model is the best model to be used. No, not at all. So do not even you know consider that that ISTQB recommends or one or the other way they only speak about V model. So is there anything specific about it? No, it's just that they wanted to explain you what's the best characteristics of testing which are being implemented as a part of V model. So uh, getting started here, we know that uh, V model starts with uh, business requirements gathering where as soon as the business requirements are being gathered, it's, it's understood that we need to invite the acceptance team to come and join us together at this point of time and collect information or you know contribute by reviewing the documentations where which can help them to uh, prepare the test cases at the same point of time being early in the life cycle and that can be used parallelly on the other side as acceptance testing so if you see here a business requirement is all about you know the overall understanding of the client's requirements and also like that's the one which basically conforms the acceptance testing. So instead of waiting for all the way long, going about all the stages and then reaching the acceptance testing and preparing the test cases may create uh, some of the defects. That is like when you run the test, you get some defects, then to roll over the actions and fix the business requirement would be quite a difficult job. Usually it does happen as an example where maybe business requirement was misunderstood, further implemented in design, further implemented in code, and then when it comes to the level where it was supposed to be tested, uh, the testing shows a defect. Now this defect could be because of wrong documentation or wrong interpretation, and in case of that, if it is so, then the rollover action would take a longer time compared to the one 
where the team is involved right at the time of business requirement gathering and has created a mutual understanding about it. So it is always said, you know, when you talk about the principle as well, the principle three speaks from the perspective of early testing, which means that uh, testing team or the testers must be involved as early as possible in the development model. So that's what we are trying to understand here, where acceptance testing team can be invited during the business requirements gathering to come and contribute by conducting reviews of such documentation, which would help the existing uh, acceptance team to uh, understand the requirements, also prepare test cases early, and design the test cases uh, well before the testing comes into picture, that particular level comes into picture. So here we say ATP, which stands for acceptance test plan, and it's not limited to the planning of that. It means that the planning, analysis, and design of the test cases as well. So similarly, it applies to all other levels, where the second level is system requirements, where we invite the system testing team to come and contribute and also prepare the system test plan and design the test cases, which will be used as a part of system testing later. Similarly, when you talk about further moving into the development side, that's your architectural design, where architectural design is about you know high-level documentations when you create like control flow, algorithms, flowchart, and so on. And we invite the integration test team to come and you know join here and contribute by conducting reviews of such documents so that uh, there are you know ways by which we can minimize the defects at an early stage so that the defects are being prevented from being introduced into the code. And the same test cases can be used for integration testing. And last but not the least, yes, coming to the detailed design, where uh, LL, you know, you know, talk about the low-level designs called as LLD can be created, and based on that, we will be doing the component test plan, which will be one of the basis for that. And following that, can be used for component testing. And finally, the code comes in between in the V, where it goes in the structure of V, follows all these stages, and moves towards the acceptance testing. So it's it's common that everyone knows about V model, but uh, understanding about this perspective is very important. That how a testing team can contribute in this particular uh, development model at an early stage, and how preventions can be taken place. So this point of time, we want to convey a message from ISTQB that uh, it's always a good practice when we have some good characteristics of testing being followed in a development model, which is not so common in any other model. So we just try to make sure that you know testing is uh, being followed uh, at an early stage so that it can help uh, prevent defects from being introduced and so on. So that's from the V model. Let's look into the next one, where we'll be looking into the another topic of understanding what are so it's not limited to V model where they also want to convey some of the inputs about some special uh, development models like, you know, when you're working with uh, such sequential models like V model and waterfall, there are different practices. But when you talk about uh, iterative incremental development models, uh, there the approach is quite different where it's not limited to... Uh, you know, where you know just one way where you have some fixed uh, stages, like you do it. Uh, you know, when you gather the requirements, you create design, you move to testing, and then you just move to acceptance and release a product. It's not limited to that. When you talk about iterative incremental, that every single iteration when it takes place, then uh, test a product is being tested again and again. So, say for example, uh, we use such models in the condition where. Uh, the requirements are being processed in steps or the requirements are frequently changing and we need to reconsider a particular piece of code in upcoming module development as well and uh, similarly for the testing also where it becomes such complicated levels uh, and, uh, involving the regression is a lot and also to a certain extent the complications are being increased where the previous test cases are rerun again and again to just make sure that the new addition of code to the existing body is not having any kind of adverse effect on the existing past test cases. So when it comes to iterative incremental, obviously, you know, uh, the requirement A is being processed and being coded and tested, then when it comes to requirement B, or maybe say set of requirements B, uh, it is basically integrated with A 
together. So when it comes to a combination of A and B put together, then the integration testing would begin. And that point of time, we will make sure that the TA is still working fine because uh, to integrate these two things, he would have modified the A, which was already tested. So similarly, when A, B are done and we get a requirement C, then to integrate A, B with C, obviously there are some things, some line of codes are being modified just to integrate that to C to have a data exchange or something. And that becomes uh, more complicated when it comes to testing because testing will definitely deal with all these previous modules being tested once again and moreover to make sure that the integration works fine. So beyond the integration, obviously, you know, if the module independently doesn't work fine, then it would be a complex uh, you know, job to find out the right defect that why exactly my test case have failed. So altogether to say that, uh, you know, iterative incremental development models are quite complex, quite complicated for testing, involves a lot of repetitions, and that's the reason we call it as iterative incremental, that it does increment, but involves a lot of iteration. And some of the examples you can see on the screen, like prototyping, rapid application development. So prototyping is your, like, um, prototype, uh, model, uh, rapid application development, rapid, uh, rational unified process, and agile development model. So team, uh, agile is very trending thing compared to V model, but they are not elaborating it here because ISTQB has all together, uh, you know, a separate certification for agile. So here they will just be introducing you to agile just to have a glimpse of it, but not even into the definition of it and what exactly it is. So oh, we just wanted to make you understand from this topic that what is an iterative incremental development model where these these type of things may have one more question where it will be just asking you maybe one of the definition that uh, you know say for example like how complicated it would be when you talk about it iterative incremental development models then you need to understand being at k2 that this is what the process is all about, where repetition takes place, and you know, there's a lot of cycles which repeats, and each repetition, each iteration, we reconsider the previous requirements, and that would be one of the catch to remember. So let's look into the next one. So finally, uh, here we come to the last topic of this uh, particular uh, module of chapter two, that is software development model. The last topic at K2 is testing within a life cycle model. So finally, here in this particular segment, they explain to you that what are the good characteristics of testing uh, which can be applied to any life cycle model. So we basically have a four standard activities or good characteristics of testing which must be applied to any level. And that's the reason they were recommending or like, you know, discussing about V model because this, these, these characteristics of good testing are very well implemented as a part of V model compared to any other model. So let's look into that quickly that what are the good characteristics of testing. For every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity, which means that, you know, on the left side of V model, if we quickly look into that, uh, each on uh, whatever activities which takes place, uh, we parallelly also look into having one kind of contribution or involvement of the testing team parallelly with what the development activity is all about. So we were talking about V model just now and we saw that when the business requirements are being gathered, we invite the acceptance test team. Similarly, when architectural design is involved, we involve the integration test team to come and contribute and you know, go through the documentations and be clear with that and maybe, you know, raise some kind of defects which can help them to prevent the defects from being introduced. So we say for every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. The point number two is uh, each test level has test objectives specific to that level. So again, when you look back on uh, V model, obviously on the right side on the validation of uh, V model, where you see that we have specific levels defined for it, like unit testing, integration, system, acceptance. But any other model uh, usually does not follow that. But what they want to say is, like when you define the models, and uh, no matter in waterfall, spiral, and all, and you conduct unit integration and all, then it must be having a specific objective about each level. It's just not that you are conducting testing. You must be specifically defining that, okay, fine, I'm conducting unit testing, and the objective of unit testing is this. Similarly, for integration, a unique objective about it. So each test level must have test objectives specific to that level that what is that you're going to achieve at the end of this. 
The next point is the analysis and the design of tests for a given test level should begin during the corresponding development activity. And that's what we were quickly looking at uh, when we spoke about B model just now. So the acceptance test plan, the system test plan, integration test plan, and component test plans are the activities which takes place during the corresponding development activity. And the fourth one here is uh, testers should be involved in reviewing the documents as soon as the drafts are available in the development lifecycle. Now team, when you talk about this, first of all, this is related to the one of the principles that is early testing, which I just now we discussed about. And moreover, when they say uh, the drafts are available, it means that they are not trying to uh, say that testing, must, testing team must wait for the finalized copy of document and then start getting involved. Because it's a common understanding that when you deal with a certain set of requirements, uh, you feel that, okay, when the first draft is being prepared, then there will be a lot of revisions which will be taking place on that. So obviously it's not uh, you know a step which should be taken by any other stakeholders to contribute there because uh, the revisions would take place and your contribution will be lost. Now, we basically speak from the perspective of uh, drafts being available. The moment you know the first copy of it is created, then we can start contributing there itself so that the corrections, uh, the inputs, what the suggestions and the feedback given by the reviewers can be considered in the next version of the same. So that basically minimizes your effort compared to a finalized copy, but uh, drafts invites a lot of changes further beyond that. So obviously, you know, a tester must be involved as soon as the first draft is available in the development model. So when we say early testing where and say that as early as possible, this is what we mean by saying as early as possible. That means where a tester is available as soon as possible, the very first draft is available for that particular documentation and start contributing to it so that any further changes or revision which takes place on that documentation will consider your suggestions or corrections which you have contributed as a part of review. So. This is one of the last topic here and uh, hopefully you know everything is clear to you and have understood about uh, the very first topic on chapter 2 that is software development models and this is as per the syllabus so you will not be expecting anything beyond this so please stick to all the points which we have discussed here because mostly they ask you a question from uh, these kind of things like you know several characteristics of good testing and can be applied to any model and they'll give you the bulleted points straightforward from the syllabus so please be prepared for that and beyond that obviously we'll be looking into another chapter uh, sorry the another topic upcoming in the same chapter so stay tuned for that and uh, in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe for it hit the bell icon for quick notifications and timely updates and stay tuned for upcoming tutorials happy learning take care